this is quantum visions welcome back to my channel and in this video we're about to touch on the breeding farms and slavery and how detrimental it was to our families and the breaking up of the black family here in america if you want to see more videos like this hit the like and subscribe let's get it it's hidden from nobody that slaves had to face the worst forms of atrocities however some hidden sad truths never came to the surface about the black slaves. Even if everyone knows that slaves were treated worse than animals, like a commodity over which masters had complete control. But only a few know how the inhuman and immoral treatment seeped into even the most private parts of slaves' lives. Earlier kept confidential records have now surfaced that show how black slaves were bred. It's the sad reality that slaves were kept in farms where they were allowed to breed. It's no different than animal breeding farms. But what more stayed hidden about the black slaves breeding farms? Welcome to a new episode of Black Culture Diary, a channel where we talk about less known and hidden black history, culture. It's crazy that they actually bred us to our own mothers. Like if the mama had a son and he was, after they unalive the daddy, because he did something that they, that they didn't like, if he was a big strong boy they bred him with his maternal parent and man that's I, I just couldn't imagine living like that like that's that's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking let's let's get it let's get it arts and lost civilization. We scrutinize history here to bring the black culture back on the surface again. In this episode, we will disclose how black slaves were kept in breeding farms and forced to mate. Let's get started. The first question one thinks about is why there was a need for slave breeding farms. When people could buy slaves from the market, why did they turn to slave breeding? Well, the answer lies in the changing conditions of slavery. In the 18th century, slavery was legal in almost all parts of the world. Traders in Europe and America could go to Africa and capture as many slaves as they wanted. Right. On return, they would sell those slaves in open markets, right. the same way as one would sell silk cloths of the distant world. Right. So However, black we were being sold like vittles, like things you can use, not as human beings. We wasn't being sold to be treated as human beings. We was being sold to be treated as property or something to use nothing like a tool like a like a drill or a, a computer you're not going to care i mean you're going to you want it to last right you that's pretty much it you, you're not going to you, you're just going to have it in the conditions where it can last you're, you're not going to allow for it to just dwindle away unless you dwindle it away on your own that's your property that you own it you can do what you want to do with it right so th that's how we were treated like we was a piece of loincloth in the market These were far from silk clothes for their masters who would use them for the hardest jobs forcing them to work in the worst conditions but in the 19th century the famous transatlantic slave trade was about to collapse mm -hmm. in britain a coalition led by William Wilberforce, comprising Quakers and Evangelicals, established the Committee for the Abolition of Slave Trade. The year 1807 witnessed the passage of the Slavery Trade Act by the British Parliament, marking a significant turning point in colonial Britain and intensifying calls for the abolition of slavery in America. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic, the economic importance of slave labor and its outputs continued to expand. Culturing lucrative crops such as sugarcane, cotton, and rice, particularly in the deep south and western regions, mm -hmm. held considerable political significance. Yes. Before the American Civil War outbreak. So the, the Civil War was the North fighting against the South because the North was supposedly had not wanted slavery to continue or reach them. So they allowed for the black people to fight in a war. And the fact that they were still had us in like in a slavery condition at that moment the movie will smith just did shows that when we did go to war try to be 
come from slavery and go to war. They wouldn't even let us know that uh, Abraham Lincoln had did the uh, had let us go free. The emancipation they they didn't care to share with us that we was emancipated because they still had tools that needed work to be done. So they still needed to use their tools to get their work done. So they didn't care that we were emancipated. They continued to work us until somebody came along and said, come on, y'all, you can go. And nobody was going to just go ahead on and do that without some type of force. It's King Cotton epitomized the monopoly held by slave states over their abolitionist counterparts in the North. The economic dominance of Cotton was so profound that secessionist states firmly believed that conflict with the Northern states was highly improbable. In the intricate tapestry of United States history, during an era when slave labor yielded substantial profits, both Congress and President Thomas Jefferson lent support to the calls for abolition. In 1808, the official prohibition of slave importation into America was enacted. However, the invention of the cotton gin and the subsequent surge in cotton production and labor demand only served to reinforce the economic indispensability of slavery. Yeah. That's when the concept of black slave breeding Gotta pay the bill. Breeding Farms was introduced. Before we continue further, tell us, are you enjoying the video? So if yes, they're, they're pretty much saying that after they created more tools on top of the human tools that they had, they still needed human tools to work those tools because they didn't want to work their own tools that they had probably had another human tool, a black person to make because we were pretty much the original inventors and i'm pretty sure a black person made the cotton gin if i'm not mistaken a black person did make the cotton gin and i will post his name right here but they needed a human tool to work the tools that was created by the human tool and that just wanted that just wanted you to keep slavery going because you're not going to work the tool who's going to go pick the cotton I'm not about to go pick the cotton and work the tool and do all of this work. <laughs> what that sound like? <laughs> okay. Please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Earlier, masters could buy slaves from the market because the transatlantic slave trade was legal. However, after 1808, a ban on slave imports was that didn't stop nothing. There was no way masters could have slaves to increase the production of their crops. Here, it should be noted that the 1809 Prohibition Act only banned slave imports. They still kept However, it going. However, slavery inside the country was legal. Right. This created a loophole for the slave traders and masters who could... Trust me, they smuggle slaves up in this country. They ain't have somebody on the border watching everything. They smuggle slaves over here. Trust me. Now open slave farms and produce as many slaves as they wanted. The enactment of the 1808 Prohibition Act served as a shield for the internal slave market, allowing slave owners to intensify their efforts chillingly. Slave owners call breeding a natural increase, <laughs> disregarding the deliberate management and joint manipulation involved. So you're telling me it is natural, even though the kids may have some type of Down syndrome or some type of gene mutation? That's unnatural. Now, you're not supposed to breed with the kids, with the parents. That's not how that works. You're going to mess up the gene pool. You're going to make it psychologically unbalanced is the best terms that I could come up with without saying the R word. Let's continue. In a perplexing web of priorities, enslaved black women in America became a rare commodity, receiving minimal health care, if any at all. Ned and Constance Sublette's book, The American Slave Coast, aptly describes how the womb of an enslaved woman became a capitalized source of fertility, hmm. with its safeguarding becoming paramount to those involved in the slave trade. It is worth noting that home medical journals began circulating to assist enslaved women through difficult births, a stark departure from the previous neglect they endured. Black female slaves were expected to bear four to five children, their high mortality rate being a crucial element in the importance placed on breeding. 
Female slaves, deemed as good breeding stock, were often advertised for sale. These women found themselves constantly being traded and incentivized by both slave owners and plantation owners. It was not uncommon See, our for women. I tr we try to get our women to understand that just because America has you in a good position right now, back then, no. They treated our women like they were modern day prostitutes, basically. Because you, 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 the, the slave owner was the pimp. And the slave woman was the prostitute. And he's going to sell you to this one. And then he's going to sell you, probably sell you back. And y'all, I hope y'all seen Birth of a Nation or Django. Y'all know what they're doing with the women. They're not just going to hold them and sit them on a mantelpiece. Let's continue. Slaved woman to be offered freedom in exchange for bearing 15 children. The grim reality was girls as young as 12 or 13 could be forced into pregnancy and give birth, only to have their child torn away from them, yep. destined for a life of slavery. But I don't even Under know this who the system, is. people became nothing more than products, subjected to dehumanization at every turn. For enslaved women, the birth... Yo, how do you expect somebody to forget something like this? How do you expect somebody to forget that these things happen to them is that every turn you're going to see this stuff you're going to see movies about it you're going to see things like this video you're going to hear people like me still talk about it and mention reparations there's no way you can forget about this stuff it's crazy that people honestly believe that they're going to make you forget the worst atrocity done to a group of people on the face of this earth. And you're just po 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 supposed to sweep it under the rug. Man, that's this crazy to me. Of childbearing began as early as 13 years old. They would likely be expected to have endured four to five pregnancies by the time they turned 20. Vulnerabilities faced by enslaved women within this breeding system were manifold. The 19th century slave market in America had no qualms about selling pregnant women. It is widely argued that the life of a female slave in America was a harrowing cycle of rape, pregnancy, and neglected postpartum recovery lasting a mere few weeks before being subjected to the expectation of pregnancy once again. Numerous I know you've seen my other video, but I was talking about with Brother Akayai, yeah, how the, our genes, the epigenetics of our genes and the traumas that we experienced was passed down from this. Our women have postpartum depression because of this. This is why. Because it's itched in the woman's brain that every time she had the child, it's being ripped out of her hand. That's a fact. This is the epigenetic trauma traces from slavery that's been passed down to our women right now today. And there's no way you could tell me that that's not true. This happened to us and those women, our women today, still have traces of this trauma. We never got nothing about it, nothing from it, nobody, no help, none of that. Just emancipate you and kick you the hell out. Now figure the rest of it out on your own. <laughs> Reveal that masters and slave owners themselves fathered children with their slaves with no legal protections or recognition of their person. Yo, what's up, man? Are those my Jordans? I can't help it if we're the same size. Woo! You have a choice between saving one person and saving everyone. I can do both. Shine if I want to. He's a good kid. Stop him! I just don't want to lose him. I say you got to let him spread his wings, man. I should go. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, June 2nd. Tickets on sale now. Personhood. The system forcefully extracting children from enslaved women can only be characterized as systematic rape. Breeding <laughs> farms epitomized inequality, with white owners illegally shielded while black counterparts had no rights whatsoever. Thanks. Sexual abuse within this context was decidedly one-sided, with slave accounts documenting the intrusive control slave owners had over the intimate lives of their property. Within the twisted realm of slavery, 
Arranged marriages and forced mating were deeply embedded in a sinister breeding culture that stripped human beings of their dignity. Hmm. The conditions under which they were bred mirrored the treatment of animals, illustrating the depths of dehumanization. That's crazy, man. Testimonies from enslaved individuals shed light on the existence right. of stock it pisses me off. Male man, slaves right. brought onto farms to impregnate female slaves owned by their masters. This disturbing practice of importing bucks became a prevalent theme wow. in the despicable breeding industry, as slave owners sought to maximize the production of slaves capable of enduring grueling physical labor in the fields. A noteworthy study by economist Richard Stooch in 1860 examined Virginia's farms, revealing a shocking ratio of approximately two female slaves for every male slave. The study estimated that females surpassed males by as many as 300,000. Dang. Such a stark imbalance strongly suggests that the primary purpose of this breeding practice was to sustain the lucrative domestic breeding industry. During the era of slavery, a deeply entrenched racist ideology justified slave owners' imposition of their will upon their enslaved individuals. What was that? That we was in we we were savages and we didn't understand English or um we couldn't read or write? <laughs> if <laughs> okay oceans sadly embraced by many while slave owners turned a blind eye to the systematic rape occurring on breeding farms they convinced themselves that their authority was preferable to the autonomy of black slaves house slaves faced the highest risk of falling victim to their master's sexual abuse consequently many enslaved women who bore children would shield them from their master's wives fearing the exposure of the father's identity Obviously, the despicable breeding practices and abuse within this factory-like system served one purpose alone, to enhance and solidify profits. As people were cruelly reduced to property, the wealth generated by this abhorrent industry grew exponentially. By the mid-1800s, the value of the South slave trade was estimated to be around $4 billion, far surpassing the combined national income from gold, silver, currency, and even southern farmland. Wow. Slaveholders had turned enslaved individuals into highly valuable assets, Look at surpassing him. their wildest expectations. He was chilling on a little hammock. Chilling. Slaves carrying him. He in the little hammock, chilling. Chilling. Shockingly, during the early 1800s, the slave trade transitioned slaves from mere property to being treated as securities. While history books have well documented the dehumanization of individuals and their reduction to property, the legal aspect of this transformation has received less scrutiny, perhaps due to its repugnant implications. In the 1830s, slave owners sought to further capitalize on their property by using them as collateral to secure additional capital in their states. Mm -hmm. Banks were established in influential southern states, including Louisiana and Mississippi, where slaves were mortgaged as property. These mortgages were then bundled into bonds that could be sold globally, enabling individuals across the world, even in countries where slavery had been outlawed, to profit from bonds backed by the value of enslaved human beings. So this sardonic so, so so the bonds that they have right now, the savings bonds, originated as something that you would use to trade a slave with? So that was the money you were bonded to them by that paper. Wow. You learn something new every day. This exposes the true nature of a supposedly enlightened world. Did you know that the treatment of slaves had fallen to such lower levels that one feels ashamed? What do you think? Should people be taught how black slaves were kept in breeding farms and forced to breed? You damn skippy. Let us know your opinions on the moral decay of the slaves' masters that had normalized breeding slaves on farms. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit the like and subscribe. I try to give you all some information where you can take it and figure out what you want to do with it. But it's out here and I'm going to be the one that helps spread it through. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the like and subscribe. Let's get it. Damn, that shit pissed me off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.